You may or may not know this, but hand sewing needles are pretty much required when we are sewing. I know that some of you love hand sewing, some of you maybe hate hand sewing, but at the end of the day, hand sewing is really, really important. So today I am gonna take you through how to select your hand sewing needles, what these needles are used for, and why we wanna have a whole bunch in our stash. As a super awesome gift for all of my amazing cosplay sewers, I have a link in the description below to a super awesome guide that has a cheat sheet and tons of cool info on each and every one of these needles so you don't have to sit there and take notes. So make sure you click that link below to download it. There's three main parts of a sewing needle. The eye, the shank or the shaft, and the point or the tip. And depending on who you're talking to and where they come from, people use different terms for the different parts of the needle. The eye of the needle can come as a rounded eye, an elongated eye, or a specialty eye like self-threading. The tip or the point of the needle can be sharp, pointy, which is what you traditionally find. They can also be blunt, and there are different uses for that. Or we can have what we call a bayonet or different kinds of specialty tips that are used for things like leather needles. The shanks or the shafts of the needle will be in a long, medium, or short length. That just describes the length of the various parts in between the point and the eye. Or it can have a specialty, which we will talk about that later. When selecting a needle size, the first thing you want to do is figure out the task that you're doing. So there's a lot of different reasons we hand sew. We might be sewing on beadwork. We might be doing ribbon work or some sort of embroidery. We could be doing general tasks like mending or sewing hems or hand sewing seams. So if you look at the chart, you'll see that there's a bunch of different tasks listed there that go across the top. And then down the side, we're gonna have the needle type. So make sure you remember to download that little chart there and the rest of this download so you don't have to take notes. So now that we know what task we're going to do, the next thing we need to do is select the size of the needle. So basically, the needles are numbered, right? So the larger the number, the smaller the needle, which also has a smaller diameter and the smaller eye. So a size one needle is gonna be really big, whereas a size 12 needle is gonna be really small. So just remember, it's the inverse of the number. So smaller number, bigger needle. Bigger needle, bigger thread. Small eyes, small thread. So five, very fine, very skinny thread needs a small eye, generally. If you have a really big eye, you're probably gonna be making big holes in your fabric. Uh, and you don't need to do that when you have really fine thread. So two things with fineness. So fine thread and fine fabric equal tiny needle. Fat thread, open weave fabric equal bigger needle. Pretty, you can kind of make it intuitive based on what you're looking at. And you'll find that if you are really struggling to pull that thread through with your needle, you are going to get a bigger needle. And if you are getting marring, so if you're getting holes uh, left in your fabric after you pull the needle through, then your needle is probably a little bit too big. So adjust the size, which is why I always say it's better to have a whole big selection on hand because a lot of times I will pick a size to start with and then I'll end up manipulating down to a smaller or a larger size based on how my combination of thread and fabric and needle size are reacting. Now knits, those are another story. So knits are, well, knitted. And knits, we don't wanna break the yarns. So if you've ever actually done any knitting, you know how it kind of works, how it kind of does that little thingy up and down and up and down and up and down and then the next one locks in like that. And we have these interlocking fabrics, which is why we have these things called ITY knits, but that's a whole nother story and we'll get to that another time. But today we're talking about just selecting the fabric and our needle thread combinations. So something a lot of people don't know about is there are special needles known as ballpoint needles that are used in knits. Now what makes these special is that they're blunted on the point. Now, if you put your fingers on them, they still might feel a bit sharp because they are small, but they are blunted on the point. And what that does is instead of stabbing right through, it's actually gonna go in between the fibers instead of going through the fibers. So if we stabbed through the knit, the yarn in those, so they're still called yarns, even though they're really, 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 really skinny yarns. So even in your t-shirt, you have yarn in your t-shirt. Um, if we stab in between those fibers, we'll actually interrupt the stretch process of the knit. So what we want to do is to just weave in between 
we don't want to stab through the actual fiber itself like that. So what a ballpoint nail is going to do for us is give us the ability to sew in and out without injuring those yarns, which will also lead to snags and to just generally ugly looking sewing. We don't like ugly sewing. We like pretty sewing, at least as pretty as we can get. Now, I understand we're all at different phases in our sewing careers, but you have an awesome secret and an awesome knowledge in knowing that there are needles designed for knits. They're called ballpoint needles. Let's go through the various different kinds of needles and talk just a little bit about what each one is for and what you do with them. Sharps are your general all-purpose needles. So when you go and you buy a pack of hand sewing needles, they're gonna be sharps. So if you take a look at the diagram, you're gonna find that the sharps have a round eye, a medium shaft, and a very sharp point. That's why they're called sharps. Sharps are good for general purpose repairs, all around sewing, pretty much if you can put a needle in the thread, you can probably use a sharp for it. It is the handiest needle to have around because, well, they're useful. They're good and sharp. So they can work with a bunch of different thread weights and they are good for a lot of different kinds of things. Honestly, really fine sharps you can use for beading. I like to use sharps for beading because personally I have a tendency to bend beading needles quite a bit when I use them because I grip really tight. Um, but you know, they're a very comfortable needle to use. They're not too long, they're not too short, and they come in a lot of different sizes. You generally see sharps in sizes one through 12. Remember, one is the big fattest needle, 12 is the skinniest, tiniest needle, but there are sharps in different sizes. The next needle we're gonna talk about is a ballpoint sharp. So a ballpoint sharp sounds a little counterproductive because as we learned in the intro of this video, Ball points are, well, not really as pointy, but we call them a sharp because they have generally the same purpose as the standard sharps, except that they have a blunted point, a slightly blunted point. They're not super, super, like they're not, you know, gonna poke you at all, but they do have that blunted point, which helps them pass through knits. So they are useful for the exact same thing as the standard sharps are for, useful for, except they are for knits. Next up is the milliners or straws needles. Now, if you're not familiar with the term millinery, millinery is hat making. And in hat making, oftentimes we had to use really, really long needles. And so millinery needles have the same tip and eye like a sharp. So they have a round eye and a sharp pointy tip, but they are much longer. Now, the longer the needle, the more stitches you can hold on at one time. So this is the preferred needle for hand basting and couture work. And I learned to do this from several of my sewing teachers. And now today, the millinery needles are the second handiest tool in my sewing box. I love millinery needles. You can hold a lot of stitches on it. So when you're doing, so when you're doing your stitching up, down, up, down, up, down, the reason it helps to go fastest is especially if you're doing an uneven basting stitch where you're really not caring about your stitches looking, you know, completely perfect and in uniform is that you can just keep shoving all those stitches <laughs> right on that needle and then pull them all through all at the same time. And then that means you're not spending and wasting all that time in and out, boom, in and out, boom, in and out, boom. Instead, we're da -da 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 and pull. So those are always in my sewing toolbox right alongside my sharps and I use them constantly for lots of different stuff. Sometimes I'll even use them for hemming. I don't know. I just really like my millinery needles. And so keep a bunch of those various different sizes. Again, they come generally in sizes one through 18. So you can get really fine ones. And sometimes those are useful for different beading purposes and for different decorative stitching. But mainly I use mine for my hand basting, which I do constantly. So don't cheat on your hand basting because it's gonna make your work look spectacular. Next up is the embroidery or crewel needle, which crewel is the term for sewing with embroidery with yarn, which doesn't make any sense why it's cruel, but it's C-R-E-W-E-L. So not like cruel as in, I hate you, but cruel as in yarn work, uh, which was very popular in different points of history and time. So cruel needles have a long shaft and a pointy tip like the sharps, but they also have an elongated eye. The elongated eye lets you put in much bigger, fatter thread, um, things like multi-stranded embroidery thread, ribbon, uh, yarn, 
various things like that. So when you're doing decorative stitching, it's super, super useful. And again, like they said, it's good for, rib like I said before, it's good for ribbon work, stump work, um, cruel work, uh, lots and lots of that specialty embroidery type stitching. And if you're not familiar with those words, don't worry about it. Just know if you're doing embroidery, get embroidery needles. You're going to have a lot easier time uh, putting your thread through those. Now we're going to talk about quilting and Japanese needles, also known as betweens. And I love these needles. They are very short and they are very fast to use. So if you are doing a lot of running stitch, long hand stitching. So like for instance, the Shiko stitching, you can use these for quilters, use these a ton, hence being called quilting needles. What they are is, you can see up here, they have a very short, they're, they're very stubby, a uh, short stubby shaft, and they have a rounded eye and a pointy tip. So just like the Sharps, they have that rounded eye and pointy tip. You can get them out of the fabric really, really easily. So they're very good for single stitch work. They're also good for when you need to stab stitch. So a stab stitch is when you're stabbing in and then you're taking your hand down and then you're stabbing up and then you're taking your hand down and then you're stabbing in. And because they are so short, you can manipulate them really easily. They usually have a little bit of a stronger shaft, especially the Japanese needles. Now the Japanese needles are kind of like a specialty take on the quilting needles themselves or the betweens, depending on what you want to call them. But the Japanese needles are very strong compared to a standard one. And I have a tendency to hold my needles a bit tight. So I do tend to bend needles easily. And that's why I love my Japanese needles. Now, the next needle we're going to talk about is something that you may not know exists because a lot of people don't know they exist, which is an easy threading needle. So take a look at that weird eye on that needle. Easy threading needles are also known as calyx eye. And those have an eye on them that you can actually pull the thread down into so that you don't have to thread through the eye like a traditional needle. Other than that, they are like sharps. They have the sharp pointy tip and a medium shaft and they sew a lot like a sharp does, but they do have that larger eye. So you just have to think about that and your fabric choices and your selection of your threads when you're using those. But another super useful needle is a chenille needle. That's funny to say, right? Uh, chenille needles have a sharp point, but a large elongated eye. So these are going to be bigger than an embroidery needle, and they're going to get you even really big fat yarns can get through them. They are very good for sinking threads in embroidery. They are very good for when you get your serger and you have those little ends that come off the end of your serger. I use these oftentimes to sink my serger threads down into the seam so that you don't have to nip close because if you do cut off those serger threads too close, you have a tendency of unraveling. Not good. Not good sewing. So those are best used for heavy duty work, upholstery type situations, uh, decorative stitching, sinking threads, uh, generally stuff where you know you're going to be using a big fat thread like ribbon um, or heavy embroidery thread yarn. You can also use those for cruel work whenever you have a bigger yarn than you would a traditional, uh, very fine cruel work. And those come in several different sizes uh, from rather small, almost ones that look like embroidery size up to really quite big ones. Depending on what you're doing, it's nice to have a selection of those around. And if you're a knitter, you may have some around already, especially if you bought those instead of tapestry needles, which speaking of tapestry needles, there's a tapestry needle. So tapestry needles are used for, well, tapestry. They have a blunt tip and a large eye like a chenille needle, but that blunt tip will help it pass between the fibers instead of through the fibers. And we talked about that. What that does is it makes it so we are not going through our existing work, especially in tapestry where we don't want to split the fibers of the existing thing that we've already sewn in. Those are really useful, again, for doing things like sinking threads. Um, if you knit, you should have them around because that's how they're very useful for weaving in your ends in the knit work uh, or in crochet uh, or in weaving. So they're just generally good all-purpose needles to have around. A lesser known needle that is a specialty needle is a leather needle. Now, leather needles have a really weird looking shaft of point. Check that out. So a leather needle has sort of a triangular shaft and point that actually has a cutting edge on it 
and that helps to cut a small hole into the leather before pulling the uh, thread through. And what that does is it makes it so that we avoid any ripping whenever we are pulling especially heavy duty leathers and threads through. Now, if you work with foam, you can also use these on foam. You can use this in things like vinyls and other leathery like fabrics. They're very, very useful and handy dandy to have around. Now just be a little careful. They are quite sharp and they do have that sort of cutting edge on them. So if you poke your finger with them, it's not super fun. Now we're gonna talk about darners. Darners come in several different sizes. They're basically known as, you can call them short darners or cotton darners, and then there's long darners or yarn darners. And darners are for darning. Well, what's darning? Like, people still do that? Yeah, actually. So darning is traditionally what's been done on knits to sort of rescue a knit that has a hole in it. So you'll hear things like darning socks. And what that is, is you pull the sock or whatever knit tight around a sort of ball shaped surface and you'll still find darning balls available if you look around, but you could use lots of different things for them. Um, but you usually wouldn't. And then what darning needles do is they help you to weave in and essentially re-knit sections of them. Well, darning needles are useful for more than just darning. You can use them for general yarn application, to, uh, decorative work, uh, things like that. They have a sharp point and a large elongated eye, and uh, they're rather easy to work with whenever you're doing bigger stuff. These are, I find these really good for wigs and wig working because you can get in there and they're big and fat and easy to hold on to. And uh, you can actually even put large amounts of hair through them if you were weaving hair in your wig. So in cosplay, we always use things weirdly and darning needles can be one of those weird things. Then we have beading needles. Beading needles are oftentimes made actually from wire. They're very, very skinny. They come long or short. They have sharp pointy tips, but they have a very fine eye and they are used for beading, especially little tiny itty bitty beads. Then we have a few other kinds of miscellaneous oddball needles. There are doll needles, which are very large versions of essentially a darner. They usually come in like things like two and a half, three and a half, or seven inches long, and they're used for making soft dolls. But I'm sure you cosplayers can think of a lot of different uses why you would need a really big needle for doing various things in your cosplay. And when you can't reach stuff, they're very useful if you're trying to go through something big, um, especially in things like wigs. Maybe you're trying to sew something in through a big bun. Well, that big seven inch needle might be rather useful if you're sewing into a big hair piece or something like that. Uh, another specialty needle or an unusual kind of needle is a curved needle. These actually have a curved shape. Check that out. And these are used in upholstery and tapestry a lot, but basically anywhere where you can't reach the backside to actually get your hands on both sides, a uh, a curved needle is useful for. And a lot of times I will use these with a small pair of needle nose pliers to hold them because their eyes are kind of weird. Their eyes are oftentimes turned perpendicular so that when you are sewing, especially if you're sewing this way, that you can reach those. So sometimes I use those with the pliers, but they are useful for things if you can't get on the back side. And they come in a lot of different sizes and shapes and different kinds of curves. And then finally, we have a plastic needle. Plastic needles are also very useful in wig making or in knit or crochet. They have a blunt tip. They're very large with a large eye on them. Sometimes they're used for kids crafting. You can get them real cheap, but I do find that they are very useful in sort of general crafting. Let's talk care and storage because while our needles are not very expensive, we do still want to care for them because, well, it's annoying to have to go buy new needles all the time. And yes, needles do get old. And yes, we do need to replace them because I know there's some of you out there who haven't changed your needles in forever. So let's talk about our care of our needles. So first, let's talk about pin cushions. Let's discuss what we don't want in our pin cushion. What we don't want in our pin cushion is any sort of polyester or fiber fill that will dull our needles. So making a pin cushion out of fuller fleece and stuffing it with fiber fill, it's not the best idea for your fancy hand sewing needles and your pins at the same time. So what we do want in our needles is for them to be filled with things like fine steel wool or uh, wool, any kind of actual normal wool, uh, we could have them filled with sand or walnut grindings. Uh, there's a lot of different materials. 
but basically we're just trying to avoid polyester. We can use cottons and other natural fibers on the outside of our pin cushions, and that's cool. So when you purchase pin cushions, there is this old school pin cushion, check that out, and mine's green, but they're usually red, and it's called a tomato, and there's a little thingy hanging off the edge, which is called strawberry. And I know some people call it a hot pepper. I don't care what you call it. It has a cool use. It is filled with emery dust, which is the same thing that they put on sandpaper. And what that does is you run your needle completely through it and it will help smooth away very fine burrs and tarnish and possibly sticky icky stuff from sewing through sticky icky stuff like tape and miscellaneous glues and things that can gum up our needles and make them icky. So that's what you want to get. You want to get one of those. They're real easy to come by. They're real cheap. Just have one around and they're fun to use and easy to work with. Another thing that we can do for storing our needles is, of course, magnetic pin cushions. Those are really nice, nice and safe for our needles. We can put magnetic pin cushions into all sorts of different things. We could glue a magnet into a teacup and have some really cute magnetic teacups. Whatever you want to do. When do you need to change your needle? New things should be pretty obvious, but we throw away our needle if A, our needle is too bent to use. The next time we throw away our needle is if our needle is just icky and sticky and bleh. We don't want icky, sticky needles. They ruin our fabric and there's no reason to keep them around. So if you sewn through something and it was icky and sticky or the glue wasn't dried all the way or you had tape in there, just throw it away. We get rid of it. If your needle is feeling like it's not as sharp as it used to be, it's probably time that you let go of that needle. If you can feel in any way, shape, or form, or see any burrs or rust or anything that makes the needle not look shiny, new, and perfect, we get rid of it. So hand sewing needles are not super expensive. We'll make sure you have plenty on hand and then you can go through them that way. Finally, we're gonna talk about quality of needles. Not all needles are created equal. Some needles are way better quality than other needles. Generally, the highest quality needles are made in Japan or Europe, typically England or France. Some of my favorite brands are DMC, which you can find at Joann's. Now, they're not the highest, highest quality, but they are probably the highest quality needle that you can find in a regular store. So you can find those at places like Joann's and Walmart and, and, and just common stores. So if you're going to pick something up, if you have the option, select the DMC. Now, sometimes those needles are in a separate portion of the store, so you may have to actually go over to the embroidery section to find the DMC needles, but it's good to take a look over there. Dritz needles aren't bad, you know, other needles, you're sharp, but if you can get yourself the higher quality needles, you're going to find a big difference in how you stitch. So over here are some of my favorite brands of needles, especially the John James, I like those a lot, uh, the Bohin needles, all of those, they're quality, they're made in Europe, they're just really a wonderful sewing experience. So if you have the time and the ability to go online and get them, you can get them at places. Amazon has them. Uh, Wawax Sewing. Wawax Sewing. You better check them out. Lots of cool, really good, inexpensive stuff. Wawax Sewing. Or just look them up. Uh, they're sewn in a lot of the local stores that are like your local quilt shops and that will have the higher quality needles. So check them out. Don't just shop at the big box stores, shop local. They have good stuff for you. And if you need something and they don't have it there, ask. They may be able to get it for you. Well, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you learned a ton about needles, probably more than you ever knew you could learn. So be sure to come back and check back as often as you can. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you get the bell for the notification so that you can know when the very next video is coming up because we have so much in store for you. Don't forget that free download down in the description here below and check out my Facebook and Instagram to know what the latest and greatest is from Crossplay Sewing School. So thanks for watching and happy cosplay. Mwah.